We all know about the Nazis. The Nazis were the violent and powerful group led by Adolf Hitler. Though their crimes against humanity can never be forgiven, Nazi's space-slash-missile program was no doubt one of the most advanced programs of its time. And without it, the Americans may have never reached the moon. So here's a story of how the Nazi rocket leader ended up leading Apollo 11. One of the largest assets America received from Nazi Germany was not technology, but actually a world-renowned rocket scientist, Werner von Braun. Braun was originally born in Wurzitz, Germany in 1912, right before the First World War. Luckily, Brown was born to a rather prosperous family, which allowed him to pursue his passions and interests from a very young age. Given that he would eventually become a rocket scientist, it's not surprising to hear that he was extremely interested in astronomy and space from a very young age. Apparently, he received a telescope as a gift from his mom, and he would use it to observe the stars all the time. Despite his interest in astronomy and space though, he wasn't particularly good at math or physics. In fact, he didn't do very well in school up until age 13, when he read the book The Rocket into Interplanetary Space by Hermann Oberth. He didn't suddenly become smart after reading this book or anything like that. School was still very much a massive challenge for him, but the book motivated him to work much harder. And this work would eventually land him a seat at the Berlin Institute of Technology. During his time here, Brown would attempt to get as involved as possible with rocket development. Two notable examples of this were his membership in the German Society for Space Travel and his tendency to help Oberth with the liquid fuel rocket motor tests. If you guys don't remember, Oberth was the guy who wrote the rocket into interplanetary space, so Brown basically had the opportunity to work with this childhood hero. Brown didn't take this opportunity lightly and worked hard to impress both Obert and the captain of the German Society for Space Travel, Walter Dornberger. Eventually, Brown would graduate from the Berlin Institute of Technology in 1932, and he would enroll in the University of Berlin to complete his PhD in physics. Unlike most research papers which Elon Musk suggests are useless, Brown's research was definitely not useless. His doctoral thesis covered his research and development of a 300 and 660 pound thrust rocket engine. Fun fact, his research was considered a military security risk, and so his research paper was simply titled About Combustion Tests. Brown would quickly turn around and implement his research with a couple of engineers. Together, they would end up launching two rockets by December of 1934, both of which were successful and reached an altitude of 2.4 kilometers. Keep in mind that Brown was only 22 years old at this point. Despite all of this progress though, Brown's future with rockets was cloudy. The German Society for Space Travel was facing massive financial issues, and Captain Dornberger actually had to get a special research grant to fund Brown's two rockets. Unfortunately, the society would end up going under, and this effectively cut off rocket funding for Brown. This was especially problematic as private rocket tests were forbidden, so Brown had to get funding through the military. Fortunately for Brown, a new chancellor had just come into power, and this man had extremely grand visions for Germany. Hitler wanted to show the world how technologically advanced Germany was. He not only wanted to develop rockets slash missiles that were more powerful than any other country, but he wanted Germany to be the first to reach the moon. Hitler knew that he had to go step by step though, so he funded rocket development as soon as possible. Hitler would scrap the rocket testing grounds in Berlin which he deemed were way too small. Instead, he set up a massive military development facility in Pienemund. Hitler would appoint Dornberger as the military commander and Brown as the technical director. And with that, Hitler ordered the team to get to work on the famous German V-2 rocket. Now, Brown really had no ambitions to develop weapons of mass destruction. He really just wanted to develop rockets for space research and eventually civilian travel. Given that this was his only opportunity to work on the rockets though, he would take the job. Over the next several years, Brown would slowly iterate through rocket designs beginning with the A-1 rocket. After a couple of iterations, in 1942, Brown would land on the A-4 rocket, aka the V-2 rocket. This rocket was able to hit locations that were 315 kilometers away, something that no other country could do at the time. As we discussed though, this was only the beginning and Hitler had much bigger visions. So, just as the A-4 rocket was being perfected, Hitler ordered Brown to develop the A-10 rocket. Hitler wanted the A-10 rocket to boast a 100-ton thrust engine, capable of hitting targets 900 kilometers in distance. He was hoping to eventually modify this rocket to support crews and send Nazis to space and the moon. Knowing this, Brown not only worked on the regular A-10 rocket, but also the modified version. The modified version was a combination of the A-10 rocket and the Me-262 German fighter jet. Braun knew that spaceflight required strong fuel efficiency and good aerodynamics as opposed to just raw power. 
So that was the reasoning behind combining the rocket with the fighter jet. Hitler would never see this project through though, as he is thought to have committed suicide at the end of World War II. Surprisingly though, Braun would end up seeing this project through till the very end. You see, after D-Day in 1944, Brown realized that Hitler had little chance at winning the war. Brown would flee the V-2 rocket complex before the Allies captured it, but he and his team would end up surrendering to the Americans in Bavaria. Braun would explain to the US authorities that he never had any intention to actually harm civilians and that he was simply a rocket scientist. Whether the authorities believed him is something that we'll never know. What they knew for sure though was that Brown was a brilliant rocket scientist. After all, the man was literally working on sending the Nazi leader to the moon at age 32. So they decided that whether he was telling the truth or not, his knowledge would be extremely valuable to the Americans. Brown and 1600 of his Nazi scientist peers would be assigned to a top secret US intelligence program called Operation Paperclip. Operation Paperclip was established by President Harry Truman and was designed to harness as much information as possible from top Nazi scientists. President Truman ordered that no Nazi supporters should be recruited. However, there are several reports suggesting that the OSS, which would later become the CIA, went ahead and eliminated all incriminating evidence linking these scientists to war crimes. Though that is no doubt an ethically questionable move, the operation is thought to be essential. The Soviet Union was doing the exact same thing with a set of Nazi scientists that they had captured. So, the US would be at a disadvantage to the USSR if they didn't go ahead and take advantage of Nazi scientists as well. We don't really know what all the US learned from these scientists, but it of course includes significant knowledge about German missiles and rockets. Operation Paperclip would take place between 1945 and 1959, at which point, the US was satisfied that they had gathered more than enough information from the scientists. As a result, the scientists would be released and allowed to just become regular American citizens. As for Brown specifically, he would become the technical director of the US Army Ballistic Weapon Program in 1952, and he would become a US citizen in 1955. This is quite ironic, as just a decade before that, he was the leader of the Nazi rocket program. Anyway, right after Operation Paperclip was closed up, President Eisenhower would establish NASA. Brown and his entire team would be transferred from the Army to NASA, and Brown would be made the director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. This sounds like it's straight out of a movie or a book, but somehow this actually happened. Within two decades, Von Braun went from trying to get the Nazis to the moon to trying to get America to the moon. Aside from being the director of the flight center, Brown was the chief architect of the Saturn rockets. He led the development of the Saturn 1, 1B, and 5. And, as we all know, the Saturn 5 would end up being the rocket used in Apollo 11 to get Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the moon. Somehow, Brown's childhood dream was fulfilled, probably in a way that he never anticipated. What's just as surprising though is the Saturn V rocket. To this day, the Saturn V is still the tallest and the most powerful rocket ever. Starship is looking to dethrone the Saturn V, but at this point, it doesn't even matter. I mean, the Saturn V has held the title for over 50 years, which just goes to show how far ahead Brown and his team were. After the Apollo 11 mission, Brown would be promoted to Deputy Associate Administrator of NASA in 1970. However, he didn't stay around for long there. He had already accomplished his dream of sending humans to the moon, and NASA was starting to receive crippling budget cuts. So Brown would resign from his position at NASA in 1972, and he would become the Vice President of Fairchild Industries. Unfortunately, that same year, Brown would be diagnosed with a kidney cancer. Despite the diagnosis, Brown would continue working at Fairchild Industries and he would start up one more project before his death in 1977. In 1975, he founded the National Space Institute, which would eventually become the National Space Society in 1987. Somehow, poetically, Brown's rocket journey began with the Space Society, and it ended with the Space Society. Near the end of his life, Brown would win two major awards, which were the NASA Distinguished Service Medal in 1969 and the National Medal of Science and Engineering in 1977. The first award is the highest award given out by NASA, and the second award is the highest science award given out by the US. Today, Brown's legacy can be found in history books and museums, but the average person isn't really aware of this extremely accomplished man, likely because of his checkered past with the Nazis. People familiar with his work, however, are extremely complimentary of Brown. Apollo program director Sam Phillips, for instance, originally said that he did not think that the US would have reached the moon as quickly if it wasn't for Von Braun. After discussing with his colleagues, however, he revised this statement asserting that he did not believe that the US would have reached the moon at all if it wasn't for Juan Brown. Did you guys know about this German rocket prodigy? Comment that down below. 
Also, drop a like if you guys didn't know about Von Brown before. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.